All right, everybody, welcome back to Binary Adventure Rad Air 2 Tutorials. Uh, so we're in the same spot we were when we left off the last video. And now what we're going to cover is how to show imports and exports, um, symbols, sections, and uh, if we have time, we might get the strings also. So um, the first thing I want you to do is when you're at a prompt, either you can remember you can be at the prompt either inside visual mode like we are now, or if for some reason you want to leave visual mode and just enter the prompt in another way, what you could do is just hit Q. So I actually forgot to tell you how to quit. I'm hoping some of you guys figured this one out. But um, if you want to go back to sort of like the entry screen of Rad Air, you just hit Q. Um, and that's going to take you back to this prompt that we were originally at. Now this prompt is actually the same as the prompt that when we hit colon when we're in the visual mode. So whatever you type down here in the left, um, you can also type if you exit all this and go back here. So for example, um, I'm going to type the command here. So what we're going to do is, is do I question mark. So the way Rad Air works is it has different main modules and then each of those modules has sub modules and uh, different commands. So if I type I question mark, the I module is to get information. So as you start to learn all these, you'll start to intuitively be able to go back and reference these things. But you know, not everybody remembers all these commands and you don't need to. All you need to do is know the main module names and, and how you get help and, and how you get the reference manual. And the way you do that is just by typing question mark after it. So um, you can see down here that what we're looking for is imports right now. Um, you know, people will, look at imports in order to see what functionality the program is importing from uh, various libraries. For example, if you wanted to see if a program is connecting to the internet or um, doing some cryptography, you could look in the imports for different, uh, you know, like commands or different functions such as uh, socket um, or uh, crypto cryptography uh, functions and things like that being imported. Um, let's say you want to see, you know, some program or some malware, how exactly it's making its connections or what types of crypto algorithms it's using and things like that. So it's a very common thing to do in IDA Pro. There's a window for it. In Rad Air, all you got to do, as it says right here, is type II. Now, remember, if you left, if you left Rad Air, you have to, the, the binary needs to be analyzed at this point. If you haven't analyzed the binary, it's not going to show you anything and it's going to look like, oh, it's not working. So if you, if you come up with nothing with this command, remember to do AAA again. Okay. So let's type II. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to do II question mark. And you can see here that now um, it basically gave us back the, uh, the main information. So basically, II doesn't have anything else to help you. It doesn't have any more help information than this. Pretty straightforward. But some of these other commands that could be two and three letters long, you can actually type a question mark and it will give you more help information, more detail about that. So I type II here um, and here we go. So it's shown us the import function. So you can see that this program is relatively boring. It just prints some stuff to the screen. It calls puts. Uh, F printf, F open, things like that. So now, um, if we wanted to go and see where is it calling printf, like we did in the last video, from here, what we would then do is we would just seek to this address right here, as it's shown. Okay. So um, just type s zero x zero 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 seven four zero. Hit enter. And then again, you have to, uh, well, in this case, we're not in visual mode yet. So now we're going to hit uh, Shift V, hit Enter, and boom, we're right there. We are at exactly where uh, this is the printf stub that we saw last time. Okay. And then uh, remember, if we wanted to then cross reference, we could just hit colon here, and then we could say AXT for cross reference two. And then we would get our cross reference list again. Um, but we don't really, you, you already saw how to do that in the last video. So uh, the main thing I wanted to show you there was uh, how to get to those imports. So let's go back and this time uh, we're just going to type I question mark again from here. And okay, so let's look at now the exports. So the exports are, you know, does this binary, is it like a library for any other files? Is it going to be exporting any functions? 
Um, so we can look through here. I see imports, um, exports, I capital E. So we type I capital E, we hit enter. And uh, these are the different functions that are exported. Um, so those are your imports and exports. Um, the next thing on the list here is to let's look at the sections. So I believe that's I capital S. So if we wanted to see like the different sections of memory, you're going to type I capital S, hit enter. And here, these are the different sections. There's enter P, note ABI tag, DynSim, GNU version, init. Um, and then we have our data, you know, our dot data section, which many of you are probably familiar with, BSS. Um, we usually have a text or a code section too. We have our lookup tables. Here, here we go. Here's our text section right here. So, and it just, it tells you the offset and the size of the sections. So, and uh, then it has, it gives you your permissions. It's kind of like in Ollie debug or one of the debuggers as well. So at this point, um, I mean, with just these last couple of videos, you should be able to start really using this thing, just practice with it. And you can get most of the information that you would get from another disassembler even already. So even though uh, Rad Air is, you know, it has a little bit of a learning curve with these commands, there's methods to the madness. And you'd be surprised at how quickly you can get good with this. And the thing is very fast without loading all that gooey stuff up. Um, it just, it operates way faster. You don't have to wait for all these things to load and the analysis take forever and things like that. So um, those are the sections. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the symbols as well. So in the last video, I showed you how to do AFL. AFL will list all of the functions and this is, a, this is probably the best way to just get a list of uh, most of the functions that are being called um, by the programs in a kind of concise, succinct way. And by the way, if for some reason you don't understand what some of these numbers mean, you, there's a more detailed descriptive verbose version, AFLL. And check this out. It's color coded and it tells you what all those numbers are and it gives you a lot of information here. So it's the same thing as this, it just gives you more info. So now um, there's also something uh, just called symbols. Um, and I believe that is IS. If you don't know, for sure, remember you could hit I question mark again, but I'm just gonna try IS here. So what IS does is it's very similar to AFL, except it shows you all symbols that it's found. So not just functions. AFL shows you functions. This shows you other symbols as well. You could see here the type of symbol right here. Okay. So um, there you go. I mean, you have a lot of information at your fingertips already about the binary. And combined with the S functionality, you can now jump to all these different areas uh, by going to these addresses. You can uh, enter visual mode and inspect these things in the uh, visual debugger. Um, you know, you can, you can move around, you can enter calls. So you can already do a lot of reverse engineering statically, which is what I've shown you. So in the next video, uh, I'm gonna go over some, uh, you know, how to get strings, but I'll show you uh, some really, really basic commands uh, to get all strings from the, from the data section, you hit IZ. Um, so these are different strings in just the data section to, to get all strings in the binary, you hit IZZ. Um, you gotta be careful this one. Sometimes, uh, it floods the, uh, the buffer here, but this is a pretty small, this is a pretty small, uh, file. So, um, I'm in Tmux. I'm going to try to scroll up here so you can see, but, uh, these are all of the ASCII strings in the file right here and actually it, it actually parsed a UTF-8 string as well so it it's pretty powerful it, it looks for various different types of strings and you can customize some of that stuff but that's all I'm going to show you right now um, and again you could then go to one of these string addresses and then you could cross-reference and see where it's being used um, so for example let's do that right here so let's take this right here um, let's hit uh, Let's go back down to the prompt. So it is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, B2. So all we're going to do is S1, 2, B2. And now uh, when we close this out, this is the string right here. 
you can see failed to open file. And then all we gotta do now is again, our seek is at that string. So we hit colon and then we can just hit AFX for, um, all right, excuse me, AXT. <laughs> So cross references to, and then hit enter, and then we can see where this is being called in uh, the code. So then we could then jump to that part of the code. We could do S O X nine fifty, and then uh, close it out, and boom, there it is. That that's where that string is being used. So um, I'm going to end the video here, and we're going to go into more detail on the strings utilities and some of the other utilities with Rad Air uh, in the next videos. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, don't forget to subscribe. I have a whole series about this because I found that Rad Air was, uh, it, you know, a lot of people have intros to Rad Air, but they don't really fully explain how to walk through binaries and, and use this thing. So um, stay tuned for more tutorials.